thank you, Debbie. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I'll apologize up front to some of you that have uh, that that attended the Association for Indiana Counties and their conference because there was a panel that uh, spoke to this, and and so a lot of these slides are going to look familiar to you. Um, but but I wanted to cover kind of the same er territory there. Just a little bit of background for those of you that don't know me. Um, I've been around public finance for just about 20 years now. I started in the budget agency as a budget analyst uh, back in 90, 1992. Um, was there for about five years, went up to the General Assembly and worked for the House Ways and Means Committee as a fiscal analyst for five years. After that, I returned to the budget agency and was the uh, deputy budget director for um, Governor O'Bannon, uh, Governor Kernan, and the first two years of Governor Daniels. And actually, Debbie reminded me that um, the first time she met me was when I was the deputy director and, and the budget or the board of accounts was in um, auditing the LOET collection process. And I was uh, the people that did that worked for me. So that was uh, kind of my first exposure to this issue. Um, and then about three years ago, I left the budget agency and went to be the deputy or the controller for the city of Indianapolis under Mayor Greg Ballard. I did that for about three years. So I, I certainly understand and, and have felt many of the concerns and, and frustrations that I'm sure each and every one of you feel um, as it comes to uh, dealing with some of these situations. And then in uh, October of, uh, I guess it was 2010, I returned to the, to the state and that's when I took the position as the uh, fiscal senior fiscal analyst for the uh, Indiana Senate. So just a little snippet on uh, kind of my background. Today what we're going to try to talk about is, is mainly the, uh, what the state is doing in response to uh, some, some recent errors that have occurred within the state and, and kind of specifically what the Department of Revenue is doing and then what this smaller group, which I am the chair of, what we're doing. At the end, then, we'll, um, I'll certainly open it up to questions. Um, and quite honestly, as I'm speaking, if I'm, not, if I'm saying something that's not making sense, please you know, stand up, holler, do something, and, and you know, I'd, rather, I'd rather deal with the issue right then. But you know, I'm not saying anything new here to you. All right, looks like that's working. OK. Um, there, there's been, for, for many, many years, concerns um, from local units of government on the, the accuracy and the transparency of local taxes that are collected and distributed by the state. Um, predominantly, that's always been around local option income taxes. Um, but I think there's other, there's other taxes as well that there has been concerns about the accuracy and the transparency of that process. And, and as I stated previously, the, the recent errors that occurred earlier this year just heightened that concern and, and, and raised questions about whether or not the state was appropriately accounting for it um, and appropriately returning the, the funds that were due to each local unit. And so the state has taken some actions to try to deal with that situation. One, uh, as you all know, the Department of Revenue has a basically a new team in place um, that is focusing a quite a bit of time to their to this to this effort in how they not only collect local taxes, but in all honesty, those errors raised issue on the state side as well. Are the, is the Department of Revenue even accounting for state dollars appropriately and accurately? And so this new team has, has focused almost exclusively on, on how they do their job and how they uh, collect and distribute those taxes. And I'd have to say, um, both of them, it's uh, Mike, Mike Alley is the new commissioner for the Department of Revenue. Um, he, has, he has come in with, with virtually, as far as I'm aware, zero state government involvement, but ha has really come up to speed very quickly on understanding what their role and their process and how the department does it. And they're continuously adding improvements to the process. 
And then their new CFO, Mike Ashley, um, has been around state government for a little while. He was in private sector before that, um, worked for numerous state agencies, um, but he too has really dived in and, and really focusing just on um, making sure that the process is, is accurate and it um, can be as transparent as possible, and then ways to streamline it as well. But we'll talk a little bit more about that as, as I move on. So those errors occurred earlier in 2012, and um, rightly so, as I said, um, the local units um, were very concerned about that and, and became um, very vocal, if you will, which through your association, uh, direct here it's you know, the Association of Indiana Counties, um, to, to make sure that you guys were part of the um, process and part of the solution in looking into this problem. And so there was this um, kind of this ad hoc local government working group that was put together. It was um, formed by the uh, state budget director, uh, Adam Horst, and the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, uh, Jeff Espick. And it was their idea to put a group together that included local units um, to look at all of the taxes that are collected by the state and distributed locally. The two main purposes of this working group is to serve as a liaison to the department and to the audit that they're undergoing, and then to review the collections and distributions of all the state collected local taxes. There should be I should have said this at the beginning, but I believe there's handouts that were placed at the edge of the table. So if you don't have them in the middle, look at the edges of the table um, for the um, handouts here. And then if you don't, I think there's some up here if somebody else, if your table doesn't have them. On the screen there or on your handouts, you can see the members. Um, I was asked to chair it um, mainly because of my local background working for the city of Indianapolis. Then the Association of Indiana Counties and the Association of Indiana Cities and Towns were each asked to um, appoint a representative. And you can see uh, Tara Klutz from Allen County, the Allen County Auditor, is a, is a member uh, and is doing a great job. I know she's here um, today, but she's doing a great job in, in participating in those, um, in those meetings. Uh, Mayor Alan Kaufman from the City of Goshen is the IACT representative. We then have the um, state auditor's office represented. Um, the direct member is Steve Daniels, um, but the, the person that's doing the heavy lifting for the state auditor, and that is, is Dan Baston, who you know I'm sure you guys all know um, is, is here as well. I see him back there working. Um, so he, he's very involved in the process as well. As I mentioned, the two Mikes from the Department of Revenue, uh, Mike Alley and, and Mike Ashley, and as I said before, um, I've been very impressed with their commitment to this, and many times during the meeting, um, they will be um, actively participating, even, even at, points, at points in time, kind of correcting their own employees when we're talking, and, and their employees will say something, and they'll kind of turn and say, wait a minute, don't we do it this way? And, and, and trying to make sure that we're staying on track. Then we have two uh, people from the budget agency, Bob Lane, who probably many of you know as the assistant director of tax division in the budget agency, and then one of his tax analysts, uh, Shannon Bibby. Excuse me. Then I have counterparts, um, each caucus, in each chamber of the General Assembly has a uh, fiscal analyst. And so it's a bipartisan group. So we have uh, Susan Preble, um, who represents the, the Senate Minority Caucus, uh, David Dukes, who represents the House Majority Caucus, and Eric Gonzalez, who represents the House Minority Caucus. So it's a bipartisan effort as well. And then we were fortunate to get the city of Indianapolis to help us in this process one of the things that the city did um, very early 
in the um, Ballard administration was a very heavy look at process and how we do things. And Manny Mendez, who is the director of audit and performance for the city of Indianapolis, is a um, what they call a master black belt in Six Sigma. And he has facilitated the meetings for us as we go through each and every one of the taxes that we've been looking at. So talking a little bit about the audit that the Department of Revenue is now undertaking, at that same time that the local working group was formed, the <coughs> Excuse me, the Office of uh, <clears throat> the Office of Management and Budget put out a request for information to do a independent risk assessment and internal controls performance audit. Basically what this is is for an independent auditor to go out and <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry to go out and look at um, potential areas within the department that could create risk and, and risk for air. And so Deloitte & Touche was uh, selected for that audit. And they presented that audit. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> they presented that audit They presented that audit in August and identified areas that needed a further look at. And, and quite honestly, that audit was very, the, the areas, <coughs> the areas that need looked at are pretty widespread throughout the department. So the areas that, that they were saying that the department needed to focus on was pretty widespread. And, and the report's available, it's out there, um, and, and, and it's, it's a public document, so if it's something you'd like to look at, we can certainly get copies out so you can take a look at that. And one of, one of their big points that they made in this um, assessment was that the department was too focused on the taxpayer and wasn't focused enough on the, the process. And so they kind of lost track of, of the process. So they are right now in the process of this audit, this Deloitte and Tooth, this independent audit company, is in the process of going through and completing the assessment of the Department of Revenue and looking for where these errors are. And they're actually doing the the number crunching and, and making sure that all the numbers tie out and add up. And uh, that reports to be released in December. So coming back to the, the ad hoc committee, the, the group was really put together to look at the local option income tax um, specifically, because that was where the air is. Um, but we're not limiting it to just the local income tax. Here's a list of all of the taxes that, that we are looking at. Um, we've identified nearly 30 different taxes and or distributions that we're going through and, and, and comparing and um, making sure that, that we're doing it appropriately. You know, I would point out it's everything from the the hazardous waste disposal fee, which is only collected and distributed to three counties in the state, all the way right up to the distribution of the gas tax, which touches, which is um, hundreds of millions of dollars and touches every, every county. I recognize that this map is hard to see. Um, and so I, I'm, not, I'm not putting it up there per se so that you can see every, every step of the process. It's an example of how detailed we get 
when we do these processes. Um, we start with, you know, this particular example is the motor vehicle excise. And we start with the very, uh, okay, what's the first step? Okay, so under this example of a, co you know, the first step here is a county adopts a tax. Okay, then what? You know, and then what? And then what? And so each of those, each of those is a step in the process. And then you can see there's kind of four big, what we, what we call swim lanes, and those are different um, agencies or different departments. Um, you know, I can't even read who, the, who those are. Um, so, but, you know, the, it, it could be local government, it could be the state auditor's office, uh, the budget agency. I mean, it's whoever touches it that's different than the person that we just, you know, and then you pass it off on to the next department. And so it's that detailed of how we're doing this. And um, we've been meeting now since, since May, and we're just about through all of them. We've got about five or six more to go. And you know, you'd think, well, man, you've been doing this for five months. But I mean, we go down and say, okay, how do, how do you do this? And each and every step, and then there's lots of questions. I ask a lot of questions. Tara will ask a lot of questions. Um, and then we'll bring in not only, you know, I showed you the list of the members that are part of it, but then we also bring in um, the experts and the people that are actually doing it and, and talk to them uh, so that we can make sure that, that um, they understand what they're doing and help us understand what it is they're doing. Um, as I said, we have about five more taxes to map, um, to finish up, and um, I told Debbie I, I wouldn't get up on my soapbox too much up here, um, but I do want to take the opportunity to say how important it is for each and every one of you and to take this type of, to the extent that you don't do this in your own organization, you really need to take this back to your own organization and spend some time looking at how you do your operations and making sure that the way that you do it, you know, is the most efficient, most effective way to do it. Um, I know it's tough to, to carve out the time to do that, but I really do think it's a worthwhile exercise, um, whether you're, you're dealing with public dollars or not, whatever, whatever organization you happen to belong to, I think it's a good, good exercise to set some time aside and, and just get the experts in the room, the people that are actually doing things and talk to them about how it is they, they do their job and ways that they could do it better and more effectively and, and more efficiently. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. So after we do, So as we've done these as we've done these maps on each of these taxes or each of this, these distributions, then um, we are also doing a legal review and making sure that <clears throat> and making sure that the the way that we are doing it is actually the way that the statute tells us to do it, and so. We, we have passed these maps on to, I mean, these maps are printed on big paper. That's why it was so hard to read that one. I mean, they're on these huge pieces of paper. You had to print them out in a, on a plotter um, printer um, to actually read them. I haven't figured out how yet to scrunch them down to get them into some report that, that, that we're all gonna be able to use, but we'll figure that out. But um, so we've given them these big printouts of these maps and then, um, Legislative Services, which is a nonpartisan um, office of the General Assembly that has lots of lawyers that write the statutes, have been going through these and comparing how we say, how the state and, and local units say they do a process. They are then comparing that back to statute. And then they're gonna give us that feedback and the group's gonna go back through that feedback and say, okay, are we doing it the way state statute tells us we should be doing it? <clears throat> and then the final step in the process is, is the real meat of the group, if you will. It, it's the time where the group is going to be able to present recommendations 
um, for improvements in the process on each and every one of those taxes that we that we've gone through. And basically, as I said, we've been doing this since May. We've met, um, I think, 12 or 13 times. Uh, we meet in two-hour blocks, and and they've been very detailed discussions, as I said. And to try to keep us moving, we we put ideas that people have on what we call a parking lot where it's an it's an issue that we're going to come back to because we don't want to get derailed on the on the first step which is how do we do it and let's get it on paper and and so we've got quite a list of parking lot issues that we're going to now circle back to and say okay let's go back and talk about local option income tax now our first parking lot issue was x Let's make sure we have the right people in the room and let's talk through that and let's solve that. And that solving that is either, um, you know, it's a recommendation or an improvement or it's something, you know, that can't be done. So, I mean, that's what's going to be in our report that, that, um, that we're going to be presenting here later, which is, I'm jumping ahead, but um, our end goal is to have a report to the, back to the state budget committee um, on recommendations of in, and improvements that can be made to that whole laundry list of, of taxes and collections. Um, you know, and those could be, I mean, as simple as, as things that don't require legislation. A lot of the times what we're finding like is there's, there's opportunities where when you're passing off information, if it's not passed off electronically, then that whoever's receiving that information is rekeying that information. Well, that's that's a big one that we really try to catch, and you know we're just saying you know that's probably a, there's probably electronic transfer that can occur there to eliminate that possibility for manual key air, or or we're trying to make sure that when there is manual key air, okay, are you doing some sort of batch control to make sure that your that whatever it is you're entering is is totaling upright. I mean, how are you controlling each and every one of those steps? And so that's what that report um, that is due by 12-1 um, will have. It'll have a laundry list of recommendations. Some will be uh, administrative recommendations, and there very well could be recommendations that would require legislation, changes in the way state statutes as we should collect something. <clears throat> 